I'd like to call the 14th meeting of the 2015-2016 Common Council to order. Will the clerk please call the roll for the meeting? Uh, let's see here. Twelve present. Alderman Herman, Hammond, Koth, and Jose are all excused. And would the clerk please read the quote for the meeting? Are we on? Is the mic on? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Being open-minded, it doesn't mean just believing everything because you like it to be true. Being truly open-minded is about being prepared to change your beliefs based on the evidence or the lack thereof. Thank you very much. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next is the approval of the minutes from our meeting of October 5th. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. I move to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, next is uh, appointments. City Attorney. We have uh, one set of appointments uh, from the mayor uh, submitting the following appointments for your consideration for the Emergency Planning and Preparedness <coughs> Committee. Uh, Mike Vandersteen as mayor, Chuck Butler as deputy fire chief, Steve Cobb as police captain of administration, Charles Adams as city attorney, Jason Blasiola as superintendent of streets and sanitation, Derek Mink as director of parking and transit, Sandy Rorick as Director of HR and Human Relations, Dave Augustine as Information and Technology Director, Sharon Thiessen as Wastewater Treatment Plant Superintendent, Joe Trueblood as Water Utility Superintendent, and two non-voting members, Steve Steinhardt as Sheboygan County Emergency Government Director, and Carlin Raditz as Health Officer for the Sheboygan County Division of Public Health. Okay, and those appointments will lie over till our next meeting. Uh, next item is a program called City Streets. Dave Beeble, Director of Public Works, and Jim Amodio, our Administrative Officer, are here to give us a program on our city streets. Good evening. We're going to briefly summarize and recap our presentation that we had at the Committee of the Whole for those older persons that were unable to, to make it and as well as for the viewing public. We're going to start with the, the first so slide and really it's just a graphic, a graphic representation of the timing of maintenance on our street network. Basically what it shows is when a street is brand new, zero years, one year old, it's in excellent condition. It's rated a 10. But over time, with traffic, weather, and age, those pavements have a life expectancy, just like any type of other infrastructure or a home, for instance. And things will start to, de de to degrade. What we try to do is extend the life. Routine maintenance, be it crack filling, pothole patching, um, some chip, chip sealing, anything that can improve the surface, keep water, keep that pavement in functioning and good operating condition. The sooner you're on that, the less costly it is and it extends the life. However, as things happen, pavements deteriorate and they get to a point where those routine maintenance strategies are no longer effective and we have to deploy more costly, more more, more intensive type of repairs. As you can see, there comes a point when it's rated between a six or a seven that pavements really need to be intensely um, maintained. Just real quickly, we can go to the next slide. Just I want you to get that in your, get in your mind about when the timing of maintenance should, should occur. The next basically is the ratings of our entire city street network. Sheboygan has 200 miles of streets. If you go right down the middle and you measure it, so it doesn't go lane for lane, it's just right down the middle, 200 miles. 
in this, in this rating, one is bad, 10 is good. And you can see the, the, the failed pavements, one, twos, and threes, that are in failed condition is about 6, 6.5% of our city street network. Fair, on the other hand, which is 4, 5, and 6, 51% of our street network is in that category. You get to, you get to good, 7 and 8, 23.8, and then 9s and 10s is 18. Uh, next slide, please. So, graphically, it looks as what you see is you see a huge peak at the five slot. As I just mentioned, when pavements get to five, <coughs> we're talking more expensive type of ma maintenance. We're doing overlays of asphalt over concrete. If they're already asphalted, we have to improve that asphalt. Typical in the past would be what we call mill off the old and put new back down. This year we've deployed a hot in place recycling of the existing asphalt to, to, to extend that life. But as you can see, there's a huge chunk of our street network between seven and, and four that is in dire need of, of some maintenance. So what types of costs are we looking at? Mill and fill, as I mentioned, is the traditional method where you have an asphalt overlay. That asphalt is cracked, it's potholed, it's shot. You grind it all off and you put new asphalt down. The cost of that is $65.50 a foot as, as of today. So that's real simply, if I'm going down uh, a typical residential street, 36 feet wide from curb to curb and going right down, it's $65.50 a foot. Whereas the hot in places we tried this year with some success is roughly a little over half of that cost, $31.10 a foot. So what you, what you see here is kind of the cost that we've totaled up for what we would need to deploy for these maintenance strategies over a number of years. So the first, those streets that have to be milled and filled is right around $10 million worth of work. Hot in place, $10.8 million worth of our city street network. Concrete reconstruction is basically where that street is no longer eligible for even an overlay. It has to be completely dug up and replaced. That's when it gets very expensive, $225 a foot. We have about five and a half million dollars worth of streets that are in that category. New asphalt over concrete. That's, Sheboygan has a, a, a predominantly concrete streets and this is our largest area of need where we would put a fresh coat of asphalt over the concrete. To do that for our city streets where they're at currently it would be 18 million 400,000 roughly. Maintenance, where we talked about earlier, that's the lower cost on, on, the, on what we would consider our, our better, better categorized streets. <clears throat> Asphalt road ceiling is $6.20 a foot, and track filling is five fifty a foot. So roughly, again, about $2.5 million there. So all of this, if you take a look at all those 200 miles of streets and what we're, where we're at in terms of their rating and what type of maintenance we would perform on that street based on its rating, it's a roughly 47 million dollars that we would be looking at. And that amount includes 7.6 million of, of curb and gutter replacement that is in, in dire need as well in our streets. The next slide basically breaks it down over a nine to 10 year period. Basically starting in 2017, you can see we have the mill and fill, the hot in place, <coughs> concrete reconstruction or <coughs> asphalt over concrete. And it roughly averages between Four and a half million to six million is the highest year, which would be in, in 2018. Again, totaling that $47 million uh, price tag that, that we're facing. Jim, you want to talk about maybe the tax levy and some of our, our, our issues with. Thank you. Next slide uh, shows our current tax levy for 2000. And 15. <clears throat> For those of you who don't know, our general fund uh, uses about 15.9 million. Our library fund is 2.3 million. Our debt service fund is 2.9 million. And we fund transit about $511,000 a year for a total tax levy of $21.7 million. And our current uh, mill rate, uh, our rate per $1,000, is $9.53. Or for an average home in Sheboygan, 
that's valued at $100,000, it would be $953 a year in city taxes. When we look at the impact uh, in 2017, as we always look forward, it says that everybody hears and sees all of the net new construction we have going on in the city, but what we don't see is some of the revenue sources that we will lose in the future. One of them is the garbage fee sunsets in 2016, and uh, that will have an impact on 217 of about $1.2 million. New construction permits, albeit we've seen an increase in the last three years, um, there's nothing new on the horizon, and probably after the end of this year when we see the influx from several new apartment buildings and one major uh, manufacturing site, permits will probably drop about 400000 a year. So in 2017, we're probably looking at about a $1.6 million shortfall in city revenue. On the other side, we see revenue increases from net new construction. In 2016, we have 750000 in 2017, we're projecting 170,000. And in 2018, which is a year where all of these will be complete, and as you know, acuity will be complete at that time as well, will be 800,000. So that the additional revenue we'd get of a million seven is going to be offset by lower permitting fees and the sunsetting of the garbage fee. So there's really no room there to say we'll have money set aside, or we could set money aside from all this new construction to deal with road issues. <clears throat> I've talked from time to time uh, in meetings about looking forward where our debt service levy is fine for now, but somewhere in the future around 2020 or 2021, we're going to have a debt service issue. Currently, when you look at our debt levy of $2.86 million, in 2016, our real debt service payments will be 4.5 million. But we have other sources of revenue. We fund it from tourism, uh, which helps offset the payment for the facility that we built at Blue Harbor, the convention center. We have the pension liability, which we charge a general fund for, which we borrowed about $7 million in 2007 that we p currently pay. And we have some special assessments that offset it. And currently in the 2016 budget, we have about a half million dollars of special assessment funding that we're going to use to help pay for debt. That will carry us through 2019. In 2020, we're going to have a debt service problem without any additional borrowing for roads, other than the $3 million we currently borrow, $2 million for general capital projects, and a million for um, equipment and vehicles uh, and motor vehicle fund. Uh, in 2021 is where it hits. We have $1.2 million problem. Next year it goes to a million five, then drops back down to roughly a million two. The assumption we used here is that we're going to continue to borrow three million, no more or less. We'll have a three percent interest rate, which is a little higher than we currently borrowed at last time, but as we all know, rates are probably going to tick up. And the levy increase needed to cover the shortfall in 2022 is about $62 per assessed um, home of $100,000. So it says, under the current laws in Act 10, we have the ability to increase the levy by increasing taxes for debt service payments we have to make. So it says we probably won't have a choice come 2020 and forward but to raise the levy to pay the current debt that we have. When you look at funding sources, the total cost is Dave laid out, and that's for a nine-year period. And Dave didn't uh, express this, but those are condition of the roads based on a 2013 survey. We're currently doing a survey this year that will end by the end of December that we turn into the state. And certainly, uh, we haven't done a lot of road work between 13 and 15. So as he showed those percentages, they probably will degradate even more from where they were in 13. But in order to do that, it says if we borrow $2 million a year over nine years, it only gets us 18 of the 47, 3 million gets us 27, 4 gets us 36, and about 5 million actually a year would service the roads that need repair over a nine year period. When we look at the impact on the levy for those borrowings, borrowing $2 million a year 
actually has an impact of $2.3 million on that levy. And don't forget our levy is $21.7 million. This is an additional $2.3 million in year nine. Um, 3.5 for three, 4.6. And if we borrowed all five million, it would increase the levy in year nine by $5.8 million. Pretty big numbers. Tax rate impact. If you look at us borrowing $2 million uh, over and above the three million we currently borrow, the two, mi two million being specifically for roads, it would increase the city's rate from 953 to 1056 and would cost the average homeowner on a $100,000 house another $103. If we borrowed 3 million it would be 155, 4 million would be 206, and at $5 million it would be $257 for the average homeowner as an increase, which is roughly 25% of what they're currently paying now. If we look at some alternatives, um, We've proposed a, a wheel tax, which would be a $20 fee per year per vehicle, extending the garbage fee, which is a $60 per year fee uh, per, per uh, apartment that generates garbage or home. If we borrow $2 million a year, we saw the increase would be about $103. And we currently spend capital of about $700,000 a year out of the current $2 million that we borrow for the general fund. There would be really no cost for that because it's baked into the debt numbers already. It would be a $183 impact per average household of $100,000 in value. And it would go as far as paying about $41 million of the $47 million back over a nine-year period. Expressed on the next slide is a chart that graphs this because as we borrow money, it compounds. And we borrow money uh, over 10 years. <coughs> So it says in the 10th year, you have the full impact of years one through nine compounding through that. And these, and these graphs show it. And it shows that it, if we look at status quo, which is $62 a year, it says that it would take 67 years to repair the roads that we currently have. If you look at borrowing $5 million, it would be $315 uh, of impact to the average taxpayer. Because this includes what we'd have to borrow in 2021 to pay our current debt levy that we have in, in the debt service fund. I showed you that shortfall, so that's, that's actually baked in here as well. If we borrowed four million, it'd be a $270,000 impact. If we did the alternative, it'd be 245, 216 for three million and 162 for $2 million. So that would be the impact. We'd entertain any questions if anyone has any. Is there any questions? Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the 67 year um, completion rate, that's, that's based on 2015 construction costs, right? Yes. So how accurate do you think that really is in terms of? Well, no, um, it's based on 2013. Based uh, 13 um, road quality, but 2015 construction costs. Correct. And it's safe to assume that costs are going to continue to rise? That's correct. We didn't build any inflation into this. The only thing we did was increase the borrowing rate to 3%. The last time we borrowed, we borrowed at 1.8. So okay. we know interest rates are on the rise, but we kept um, constant dollars on construction costs. So this is a fairly conservative number um, looking forward in terms of construction dollars? Correct. And then uh, what type of effect do you think um, the implementation of, I, I think the prevailing wage changes will take effect in 2017, what kind of impact? I, I know that doesn't affect work we do ourselves, but do you have an idea how that will impact for work we contract out? Uh, yeah, not at this point. Um, we're, we're hoping, obviously, for, for lower construction costs, but a lot of this work, there, it's, it's fairly capital intensive to get into this work, so there's not a lot of competition for road construction, if, I, if to put it bluntly, is we have one asphalt contractor in the area and maybe like maybe two paving contractors to, to work with, typically. And, and are you fairly comfortable with that interest rate at 3%? I know the rates are really low right now, but feds have been talking for a while about raising. Do you, I mean, you can't predict the future, but yeah. you'd probably be making a lot more money if you could predict that, huh? 
I'd be down. <laughs> Typically, the, the, what we've seen so far on, on construction projects is about 5% annual increase for construction costs. I guess the point I'm just drive, trying to drive home with this question is that these are fairly conservative numbers and most likely they're going to come out higher based on the, the facts of the, the, the data on the roads are two years old already and construction costs are based on flat 2015 numbers with no inflation. Thank you. Are th is there any other questions? Alderman Boren. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, Jim, the, uh, the impact on the property taxes for 2017 would be $62? Is, is that what you're saying? 2021, it would be $62. Pardon? In 2021, it would be $62. Okay. Uh, and that's assuming that we're, uh, and then you're going over these different bar borrowing amounts here. Uh, so at the end, at the end of when we get up to 200, uh, 2000 and was it 25 over the period of those years, it would have cost me $315 total or how I'm not quite That would be the impact that, in that year would gradually go up to 315 by that year. But if you continue to borrow at that rate, from 2025 on, the impact would be 315 a year. Okay, so uh, in 2000, if we if we pass the uh, if we pass the wheel tax tonight uh, with your with your different funding sources here, how much is that going to cost for 2017 on a hundred thousand dollar house? Well, if we pass the wheel tax, it's not included in the tax rate. It's not. It's a fee. You pay that at uh, motor vehicles when you register your plates every year. Okay, but if we if we borrow two million dollars in 2017 besides the wheel tax, uh, what's 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 that going to cost a, a person with a hundred thousand dollar home? It's probably fifteen bucks. Fifteen. It goes from fifteen all the way up to 162 in year ten. Okay. If you look at the color, I don't know if you have the. Yeah, I got it. All right. Thank you. Any other questions? Very good. Thank you. For, oh, go ahead, Alderman Carlson. Uh, just real quick, could you, um, the hot in place is, is the new process we started this year. Could you just explain the limitations of that? I mean, it's a, it's a great process, but it's not as long-term, correct? Correct. I mean, as you see, it's, it's more than half the cost of the, the traditional, what we'd say, mill and fill. However, the longevity of it is debatable. Some have gotten seven to 12 years. We'll see. Uh, it's our first year doing this. We want to see how it stands our, our winters, the traffic. Um, and ideally, yeah, we, we, we're, we're hoping to get 10 years out of it. Where your traditional mill and fill, we've gotten anywhere from 15 to 20 years life expectancy. But, but at the same time, it's, as it was demonstrated, we can't use that on all every single asphalt. There's some asphalts that will have to be completely milled and, 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 and relayed. And then uh, last question on, the, on this part, I promise. Um, in terms of doing the work ourselves in-house, um, we do have limitations in terms of our equipment, correct? We, we have terms of, of equipment, uh, labor, and uh, in just some of, the, some of the processes, yes. We're, we're, we're able to do smaller types of projects and we'll continue to do that such as the curb and gutter and, and, and concrete panel replacement and small asphalt repairs here and there. But when we talk about a, 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 pro, a program of this scale and complexity, the, predominantly this will be contracted out. Thank you. Any other questions? I guess, Mayor, if I might, I'd just like sure. to make one more point. What we showed you was for the next nine years, but this cycle continues after <coughs> that. It doesn't mean that we're done with roads because we've got roads that are going to continually get worse if we don't get funding to maintain them. And for example, if we do a hot in place at last 10 years, in that 11th year, we're probably going to have to do a mill and fill. So uh, these things will continue to go that way through the cycle. So if you're really serious about roads and you want to keep them in good condition, it's a $5 million nut a year for a city this size with 200 miles of road. Gentlemen, thank you very much for your report. Next, we'll move on to public forum. City Clerk. Okay, this evening, let's start with Henry Young. Henry, could you come up to the front, please? I have to go through the nursery school. Okay. <laughs> we'll wait. 
Henry, can I have your home address, please? 1330 North 5th Street, Sheboygan. Okay, and you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you, Sue. You're welcome. I don't have notes in front of me, so I'm doing most of this from memory. I have been the former owner of the Young Shoe Manufacturing Company in Sheboygan. I have been had the privilege, really, of being on the Capital Improvements Commission for 10 years. Currently, uh, I'm on the Police and Fire Commission for six, but I have another four years to go. And it truly is a pleasure and a privilege for me to be part of the great city of Sheboygan, Wisconsin. I am here to promote the wheel tax. I have given this a lot of thought, and the last meeting that the Capital Improvements Commission had was on August 5th, in which I've done for the last three or four, maybe even five years, I have asked for permission to talk about the wheel tax. And I really wasn't as adamant about it as I am tonight because I live a block away from 6th Street and have watched the continued deterioration between Superior Avenue and Niagara. And I know that every year that I sit on the Capital Improvements Commission, it's been delayed and delayed and delayed. So this year I thought I'd be a little more adamant about it, and so consequently why I'm talking to this group this evening. For me, giving up one fish fry a year would not be an inconvenience, even including one beer and paying the tip to the whoever's waiting on me. The same would be true if when my wife and I go to the movie and we decide to have a tub of popcorn, I can get along probably without that $20 as well. I also calculated this year that driving down 6th Street, it, I make probably a thousand yeah, a thousand trips a year, and that's a lot. And I'm just concerned that uh, we should be a little more concerned about how our streets really, really measure up. I also look at the fact that driving those 10,000 miles at 20 miles to the gallon with my SUV I'm using 500 roughly gallons of gasoline. It's a dollar a gallon cheaper than it's this year than it's ever been before. So I'm ahead of the game. I also want to close by saying that for me, when I get up on a Wednesday morning, which is garbage day, I walk probably 20 seconds with my blue bag and my white bag to the curb, and within 30 minutes, that garbage is gone and I'm a happy camper. The next day, which is Thursday, I also go out and listen early in the morning to the street sweeper that is taking my leaves away, and again, I'm a happy camper. Within two months, which all of us, I think, might experience, we may have a little snowfall, and I'll be happy when the plows come through, so I'll be a happy camper again. I just encourage this group particularly the alderman that I'm facing and addressing this evening, to really please consider, consider this wheel tax. I know that in listening to Dave and Jim, the one thing that came to mind is, this is a serious matter of our streets and it's not gonna go away. And it's even more serious tonight to me since I've heard their presentation. Thank you so, thank you the mayor, and thank you everyone for listening. Thank you, Henry. Next on our list is Bill Paul. Is Bill here? You want to come on up, Bill? <coughs> Bill, I need your home address, please. It's 6724 Wilson Lima Road. Okay, in Sheboygan? It's in Oosburg. Oosburg, okay. Oosburg uh, mailing address. Okay, and then you will have five minutes, sir. Okay. Uh, since I am not a resident of uh, Sheboygan, I am going to make this pretty quick. Um, uh, my concern when I first heard about the wheel tax was there was comments that were made in the Sheboygan press that once this wheel tax was passed, uh, it was going to be, cons they 
there was one individual who stated that uh, they were considering having the tax moved on to the county. Um, and that, that concerned me. Uh, but uh, we had a, a, a discussion uh, before we came here and I was assured that uh, that would not be a, an issue coming up in the, uh, coming up in the future. Uh, the other point that I wanted to make is I've seen this presentation and I noticed that it seems as though that Sheboygan is going to be taking on the whole task for the, for the next nine years. Um, I talked to a state representative and he stated that there, there, was tech, there was bills that were being presented that could affect uh, how much uh, cities, cities get construction uh, funding. And I was just wondering if that were to take place, what, what's gonna happen if this wheel tax is, is in place? Uh, is, there, is there ways that it's gonna be adjusted? Or is it gonna stay the way it is? And are we gonna have the same situation that we had with uh, prevailing wage? Uh, prevailing wage, as you well know, was put into existence in 1931, and it was never looked at again until this, this prior or current uh, current year and I'm just concerned that uh, once you put something into place it's very difficult to get out thank you thank you Bill next on our list is Philip Parker is Philip here Philip would you mind coming up please Good evening. Can I get your home address, please? Yes, it's N4960 Blueberry Lane, Plymouth, Wisconsin. Okay, and you will have five minutes, sir. Okay, I'm basically here as somebody out of the city also. And my concern is once you, they, you get a wheel tax here, all the other communities are going to be interested in a wheel tax. They, they always they seem to be a copycat especially the colony board likes to look at things. A couple of years ago, it was a hard time stopping them from putting on a half percent sales tax. So my big concern is that this stuff is not being going to be acted by the other areas, so we've got to find a way to stop them from happening. And in our town of Plymouth, we don't have a lot of problems with streets because they seem to be working on them all the time. They apparently have organized a budgeting process to take care of the streets. It was really a rough year this year. Everything seemed to be closed in Plymouth because of resourcing all the streets. Nobody's talking about they didn't have money to do this. So the question is, why is Sheboygan always pushing off maintenance? We had the same problem for a while in Plymouth with the schools. If they want to have to spend a few more dollars, what they do is cut maintenance. Always take it out of maintenance. Always take it out of maintenance. Pretty soon they got to put a bond issue for it to get money to maintain and repair this stuff. You need to go keep maintenance in place. It's like my own home. I have to make sure there's always, every few years, I got to put a roof on something. There's always a need for something. Sidewalks. I have to do this myself, but I budget for it the entire time. I don't ignore budgeting for maintenance of my place. And that's what the city should be doing. It should be budgeting for, the, for money to keep your city up on maintenance, and you wouldn't have to constantly look for another source of income. So, and some of the other points that was already pointed out here, and basically I just want, I don't want to wind up having to deal with a tax also. And when you do get this tax, I know from my situations, they put in this tax to get rid of tires. You have to pay a fee of like $5 to dispose of tires. What they do, they come out and throw it in my ditch. I have to dispose of it. So now what I do is I call the county to come and tell them, get these tires out of my ditch. So what have they saved by putting another tax on for $5? It's costing them more than they're getting out of that $5. So when you try to figure things out, another thing they'll probably some people will do is they'll move their vehicles out of the city. They'll put them in 
not as part of the residence, so they don't have to pay this tax. I know there's some doing that in a number of areas. What they're doing is they're moving their cars out of Sheboygan County so they don't have to do the testing. You'll find that happening with some of the wheel tax. So I'm just saying you're going to have some problems with it also. I thank you very much for giving me this time to talk. And thank you. Thank you, Philip. And lastly, we have Rachel Cook. Rachel, are you here? Okay, you want to come on up? And Rachel, I'm going to need your home address. Uh, my address is 828 North Water Street, apartment number two. Okay, in Sheboygan? Yes. Okay, you'll have five minutes. Okay. Um, I'm a resident of Sheboygan, and I don't know how many people in here would be in the same boat as me, but we're a fairly low-income family, family of four. Um, we make about $35,000 a year. I'm a stay-at-home mom, um, so I have these two right here and another one as well. Um, I have a child in school, so I'm paying a lot of unpredictable fees with that out of our low budget for field trips and books and then more books for early literacy intervention program. And then there's always two gallons of milk a week, which gets expensive, always running out of something. <coughs> um, I've got to say, just a couple weeks ago, we paid our registration for our truck, which we have one vehicle. And that was $100, and that really hurt. Um, that was very hard for us. So Judah had to go an extra two weeks without mittens. So that was hard. Judah needs new gym shoes for gym class right now, and I can tell you that if we had had to pay that little bit of extra, which just seems like, you know, skip your coffees for a couple days to some people, it's detrimental to a family like ours, and it really hurts. Um, my garbage fees are included in my rent, so if those go up, that's going to increase my already very high for my budget rent. Um, we're very careful with our money to make sure that we're not um, relying on government assistance for everything that we need. Um, we budget. Um, when money gets tight, we eat macaroni and cheese. And I can tell you that we just can't afford to help pay for the roads. When I look at the roads, I don't think about how much they need fixing. I think that they're getting me from A to B, and are my kids going to have everything they need tomorrow? Um, so a lot of the people that are in the same boat as me can't be here. I can tell you it was very hard for me to be here. Um, it was very hard for me to even... Um, get on the list to speak um, because I needed a phone to call to get on the list and I don't have a phone. So I had a friend who drove to my house so I could use her phone so I could call to get on the list. So think about all the people that are in my shoes who can't be here because they might have had to walk like me and maybe they don't live two blocks away like I do. Um, or maybe they're doing spelling homework with their kids right now, which I need to do when we get home. So think about us. Think about how that's going to affect low-income families. Um, it is going to hurt. It seems like just a little bit of money, but to somebody else, that really is a lot. So that's, that's all I had to say, and thank you for listening to me. Thank you, Rachel. Thanks. That's it for this evening. Thank you. Next, we'll move on to Mayor's Announcements. Uh, on your desk tonight, you have a copy of the curbside recycling report. Um, since the, we, the program was begun in January, our uh, recycling rate has increased 6.1%. That doesn't sound like much, but when you look at our goal to be recycling 40% of our curbside uh, garbage, we've accomplished 46% of that goal so far. And I really want to thank our strategic fiscal um, task force, the uh, rather the uh, sustainable task force, the planning department, DPW for all their efforts, and just remind people that if you're going to recycle your garbage, it has to be in a blue bag. And then also, Halloween is coming up. Our hours for Halloween trick or treating will be on the 31st Saturday from 4 to 7 p.m. Next, we'll go on to hearings. Item 2.1 is a hearing to obtain citizen views related to the Community Development Block Grant Disaster Recovery Funded Project at Pennsylvania Avenue from North 7th Street to North 4th Street in the city of Sheboygan. Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. Move to close the hearing. Second. 
Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor of closing the hearing, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Next, we'll move on to consent agenda. That'll include items 3.2 through 3.13. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'd make a motion to accept and file all, all ROs, accept and adopt all RCs, and pass all resolutions and ordinances. Second. Thank you for that motion. Is there any discussion on any of those items? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage on the consent agenda? coming through yes or no yes okay got it are you breaking the seal? 12 eyes motion passes well we'll move on to reports of officers item 4.1 will be held for item 5.1 item 4.2 will lie over until November 16th Items 4.3 through 4.11 will be referred to various committees. Under resolutions, uh, item 5.1 is a resolution by Alderman Bellinger authorizing entering into a contract for improvements to the Harbor Center Marina Administration Building. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. I move to suspend the rules. Second. Thank you for that motion to suspend. Is there any objection to suspension? Seeing none, please proceed. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'd like to move to accept and file uh, the RO and to uh, pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion, Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I was wondering when I read over the uh, document, I couldn't tell which fund the $147,722, where that's, where that's coming from. Can anybody fill me in on that, please? Administrator. Could uh, Mr. Amodio come up to the front so everybody can hear at home, please? Administrator Amodio, if you'd uh, come to the front podium, please. Sure. Uh, the $148,000 roughly is gonna come from the Harbor Santa Marina Fund. Um, since we changed, um, management last year. Um, the Marine actually made $100,000 in operating income for 2014. It's on track to do the same this year. So with that net operating income of $200,000, we will pay for those repairs out of that. Thank you. Any other discussion? Would the clerk then please call the roll? Twelve eyes. Motion passes. Items 5.2 through 5.5 will be referred to various committees. And then we'll go on to reports of committees. Item 6.1 is an RC by the Committee of the Whole to whom is referred RC number 143 of 1516 by the Finance Committee and GO number 17 of 1516 by Alderman Thiel amending section 118-91 and section 188-94 of the city municipal code relating to city motor vehicle registration fee and recommends that the report of the committees be accepted and adopted and uh, the attached substitute ordinance be passed. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. I move to accept, adopt, and pass a substitute ordinance. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Uh, the motion is under discussion. Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I would like to amend the document to add a sunset provision of 10 years, so it has to be revisited, or it has to go away. Second. 
how many years? I'm sorry. Ten. Okay, we have uh, an amendment uh, and a second. So the amendment's now on the floor. Is there any discussion on the amendment? Alderman Heideman. Yes. I was wondering if they would consider, uh, uh, 10's a pretty big number for me. Uh, I was also going to uh, make a motion to amend it, and I'd, I would have liked to have seen it at five years. So I was just wondering if you might want to reconsider that. Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the reason why I chose uh, 10 years is because the outlook we have is nine years. I, I think 10 years is a pretty good number. It gives the city uh, plenty of ample time to get the work done that we have right now, uh, keeping in mind that the, the work's never going to go away. I mean, we live in Wisconsin. I mean, the, the thaw and freeze cycles wreak havoc on our roads. Uh, I think 10, 10 years is a good number. It goes away in 10 years, and at that time, that council has to decide what they're going to do. Thank you for those comments. Is there any other discussion on the amendment uh, to put a sunset of 10 years? Seeing none, uh, Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I guess my only concern with the 10 year, I would be more apt to support uh, Alderman Heideman's suggestion of five. And what piqued my interest in one of the gentlemen spoke of the public forum tonight is there, there's legis possibly legislation coming forward and maybe Alderman Carlson would, would be aware of some of those, but there may be some legislation coming forward that would help us with some of our street funding. And uh, if that does come to fruition, uh, maybe there's an opportunity to, uh, you know, sunset it sooner or make some adjustments to it. Uh, once this passes, are, is there any opportunity maybe for the city attorney to amend this if such legislation would come about that this maybe wouldn't be as necessary? City Attorney? You can always uh, repeal the ordinance. Pardon? You could always repeal the wheel tax. And, and while there was some discussion at the state level, um, it, it never really got the light of day for a, a vote. It seems very um, dubious that that is going to happen in the future, but if it does, we always could repeal it then and adjust it at that time. Um, Alderman Carlson. Thank you. Uh, just a response to Alderman Bourne's uh, comment or question. I, I, it's a very valid question. Um, we, we can all hope that um, money is going to come raining down from um, Big Brother, whether in the form of state or federal. But as I talked about during the committee of the whole meeting, I don't think we should depend on what could happen. We, we're not sure. There's a lot of um, uncertainty at every level, especially at the federal level. But at the state level, there, there is a lot of ongoing discussion right now as to how they're going to fix the transportation problem. But that really directly affects the state transportation in terms of highways, the, the bigger projects and, and, and the state-funded projects. When it comes to just the local roads here in Sheboygan, that, that's what we need to focus on right now. The, the numbers that we're talking about, the $46 million, only affect the city roads that are not... Um, county roads or um, state roads, correct me if I'm wrong, Director. So we, we really need to be focused on ourselves right now. We need to solve the problem on our own because we cannot depend on the higher levels of the government to come to our rescue because I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Again, on the amendment of 10 years sunset, Alderman Donahue. I'll pass, actually. Okay. Are there any more discussion on the amendment? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll on the amendment? This is not the amendment. This is the amendment. Sunset in 10 years. Yeah, I'm just not seeing, I'm sorry, I'm not seeing that on my screen. Yeah, it's there. Sun amend to sunset the wheel tax in 10 years. I'm not seeing that either. Maybe just scroll down. It's a point of clarification. We are s only voting on the amendment regarding the sunset provision. That's correct. That's what this vote is for. Ten eyes, two noes. Motion passes. Uh, the main motion as amended is on the floor. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. I would also like to make an, uh, an amendment, and I would add it, I'd like to add it to B on the document, and, and that is uh, 
to add to add to B, and all monies remitted will be used for labor and materials only in maintaining the streets in the city of Sheboygan. Uh, and if I can just comment, my concern is. Uh, could we have a second on that first? We have a second. Uh, please proceed. My, my concern is I think the language is a little bad, uh, a little bad, a little vague, I should say, in what it actually can be used for. And my concern would be, let's say in three years, uh, Director Beeble would need a new roller for rolling out the streets after they're improved. Uh, I wouldn't want to see any money coming out of the wheel tax if it passes to be used for equipment because then that's going to take away, let's say hypothetically, and I don't know what a roller costs, but let's say hypothetically it costs $200,000. I don't want that $200,000 coming out of the proceeds from that year from the wheel tax to fix the streets. So I think in order to clarify the document, uh, that's why I'm making that amendment just for... Could so you repeat no it again, please, Alderman Bourne? Pardon me? Either could I have it or could you repeat it? Yes. Uh, we'd be adding that to B, and all monies remitted will be used for labor and materials only in maintaining the streets in the city of Sheboygan. For labor and materials? Lab uh, right, labor and materials. Only. Okay. Only. Yep. Thank you for those comments. Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Alderman Barney, you and I actually agree on something. Um, I just wanted to make sure that does this affect um, how we would contract or subcontract the work? Um, I, th I think it's, it's good, good in principle, but I, I'm not a lawyer here, so I don't know how that works when we're, when we're contracting out the work. That's a question. City attorney? You know, I, I don't know specifically. I mean, typically we're, when we're contracting, we're contracting for labor and materials. Are, are there times that uh, we might contract for other things, I think? Probably uh, the Director of Public Works can answer that better than I can at this point. David Beeble, would you like to respond to that, please? It, it, the question is, is that you're looking to do just labor and materials and not necessarily, let's say, for equipment purchases. Now, one thing I want to qualify, sometimes this, if we're doing a reconstruction and we're doing traffic signals, I would consider that part of materials, even though it's kind of equipment related, there's controllers and things, but that's materials, it's for the benefit and improvement of the actual road surface, it wouldn't go into actual equipment, so yeah. That feel, feel. And for contracted services, yeah, same thing would apply. When we contract work out, it's for a complete job, they provide all materials, labor and equipment, and their equipment is is part of the process there's rental charges that's built into their cost of them doing the work i have a follow-up um please go ahead alderman carlson thank you um getting into the weeds here um do you, do you sometimes rent equipment for um road construction we do and typically what if that's the case i mean that's through our operating budget if it's a capital project again that's included in the the contract, the specifications, what's needed necessarily to do the repair. So this won't affect your rentals? No. All right, thank you. Alderman Bourne. Thanks again, Mayor. I had, I had this discussion with Mr. Beeble last week, and one other question I had, and that would be uh, most of the, uh, the specs on what you want done, is, that, is most of that done in-house by our engineering department, or I guess... Uh, I wouldn't also, if you need to hire an architect or something to, to do a street, I really wouldn't, where would that money come from? I wouldn't want to necessarily have that come out of the uh, wheel tax either because then again it's taking away from money that you're actually going to be using for materials and labor. Right. At, at this point we are, we are planning on doing the majority of this in-house. Some, <coughs> some of our larger reconstruction projects such as, well, the Penn Avenue project or Eisner Avenue, we actually contract the engineering out because, and those are typically when we work with the DOT or federal funding, there's special um, specifications and needs for those projects that require a little different type of engineering and, and a lot of extra paperwork, I would say, on those projects. So therefore, but with this program that is being presented tonight is mainly, like I said, our resurfacing program is hot in place. We're looking at the mill and fill we, we have t t traditionally done those types of improvements 
through our engineering office, specifying them, going out for bids, and contracting that all in-house. If I could just follow up, Mayor. Please go. Thanks, Mayor. So just to be clear, if you had a bigger project and you had to hire an outside engineer, you wouldn't anticipate those funds for the engineering studies coming out of the wheel tax funds, or am I, or no, would no. they, or where, and, and if not, where, where, do, they, where do they come from? We, we, I think as, you, as we saw, there's gonna be multiple funding sources on this. When we go through the capital improvements process, those are the projects that will go into the capital improvements and say, okay, this is a major road project, it's gonna be a reconstruction, and then we lay out, okay, the engineering, will be contracted. The engineering estimate on this project is 100,000. The actual reconstruction is 2.5 million uh, and so forth. So that's where that would come into it, where if we go through the Capital Improvements Commission and capital borrowing, that's where the, you see the typical engineering services included. Okay, thank you. Thank you for those comments. Thank you. Any other discussion? See none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? On the amendment. On the amendment. On the amendment. On the amendment. Right. This is to amend um, to be quotes and all monies remitted will be used for labor and material only, not equipment purchases. Does that pretty much sum it up? Well, we could add that. If that's, I can add. If that's okay with the second. Yes. Okay, are we clear on the amendment? That's what we're voting on, just that amendment, Alderman Borens. Okay, the clerk will call the roll then. <clears throat> Ten eyes, two no's. Motion passes, uh, or the amendment passes. Well, now we're back to the uh, main motion as amended. Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> I didn't vote for the uh, wheel tax at the Committee of the Whole, and I, and I don't intend on uh, supporting it tonight. And I just wanna go over with the aldermen, and I want them to consider not only what the young lady had to say at the public forum, <coughs> but also the environment that we have in Sheboygan for a wheel tax when it comes to the taxpayers. I read with interest yesterday an article in the Sheboygan Press that 52% of the Sheboygan school children qualify for free or reduced cost of lunch, which indicates that their parents are probably having a great deal of financial difficulty. 52% of the kids in our schools qualify for that. Per capita income in Sheboygan County and the United States has gone, gone down every year for the last seven years. So we're spinning our wheels at best. Worker per, the, worker the worker participation rate in the United States, as I, as, as I saw in a report last week, is 62.49, the lowest worker participation rate in this country since October of 1977. So you have basically 37.51% of the people in the United States, and that does filter down, unfortunately, to our area, who have given up looking for work. And as I mentioned last week, it came to fruition. People in my age group, the senior citizens, no increase in Social Security for 2016. Medicare supplement premiums are going up. Deductibles and prescription drug costs are continu continuing to skyrocket. Yesterday, there was a letter to the editor in the Sheboygan Press. It's only a couple paragraphs, so I think I'll share it with the council in case you missed it. It was from a young man from Oosburg who wants to move to Sheboygan. I am 19 years of age, and I'm looking to move out of my parents' home to live in the city of Sheboygan. I am working on saving money and also paying back my student loan for my first year at UW-Sheboygan. With working 40 hours a week at $10 per hour, I should easily be able to make a living, but when I did the math and budgeting, it did not work out. When I, when I look at the budget, I can easily cover the cost of rent, food, and living expenses. However, when I look at my new taxes, expenses presented, wheel, wheel tax, garbage fee, property tax, sewage fees, etc., 
I will, be I will be living from paycheck to paycheck. Why do we have so many taxes put on us? Why doesn't the city believe we are taxed enough? Living in the county so much in debt, I'm sorry, living in a country so much in debt, we should understand that every little bit, every little thing adds up. This only encourages people to live and depend on the government when we should be prosperous and able to succeed. If the city wants young people to move and thrive, it should be, it, uh, it should be affordable. So again, uh, uh, I, I'm looking at this from the environment that we, we currently have, and it's all age groups. It's, it's the people who have kids in school, it's the senior citizens, and young people. And, and I think this young lady's story here tonight is just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, and as I mentioned last week at the Committee of the Whole, uh, and, I, and I appreciate what Jim Amodio does, but uh, we have 81% of our general fund goes to, uh, our, I'm sorry, of our tax levy goes to salary and benefits. That doesn't leave a lot for all the other necessary things that we have to do. And also, uh, I think there are areas in the budget uh, that we can take a look at to possibly come up with some savings. And I, and, and I understand Alderman Carlson's point from last week that we're not going to cut ourselves, uh, be able to make the cuts that are going to be able to sustain. But I, I, had a, I had a conversation with Jim Amodio last Friday, and we were talking about the budget not only for 2016, but for 2017. If the garbage fee is not renewed, we have a structural deficit for 2017 of about $2.2 million. Even if we renew the garbage fee uh, for 2017, and that brings in about $1.2 million, we're still going to have a, structu a structural deficit for 2017 of $1 million. So, uh, you know, I think, and we're going to be talking about the budget at the next meeting, and we can talk about some things, but I think we've been kicking the can down the road for too many years already. And that's basically what I think we've been doing with the garbage fee, which I, which I oppose. So until I think we do a little better job of looking at our spending in, in various departments, uh, I can't support a wheel tax until we get a better handle on our budget and try to whittle down that 81% 81, 81 salary and benefits. Thank you. Thanks for those comments. Any other discussion? Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I think I've been here for four and a half years. Um, not ever has there been a time in the past four and, a, four and a half years that there's been a proposal that could significantly decrease our budget. I have not seen one. We keep hearing about the fact that we need to cut our costs, we need to fix our, uh, fix our structural deficit. However, no one's brought anything to the table. The fire department always comes up, but nothing else ever comes up. At some point, we need to realize, and I mentioned this during the Committee of the Whole meeting, we do not have a spending problem. We have a revenue problem. We are still recovering from the recession back in 2009. The city hasn't grown as fast as it needed to. The growth equals tax dollars. The, the, more businesses that, that, uh, the more businesses expand, the more people that move to Sheboygan, the more revenue we're going to be able to take in at the same tax, uh, at the ta same tax levels. However, it's not happening as quickly as, it, as we would all like it to. Roads are a major issue. They always have been. Nobody before us has really focused on the problem of fixing our roads. And that's why we're in the situation we're in right now. That's why we have $46 million of roads that we need to fix right now. Everyone has kicked the can to us. At this point, we kind of need to draw a line in the sand and say, we're going to start fixing the roads. We're going to start doing something to fix it, in addition to, to continually fixing our budget. And we are doing that. We are doing that in terms of uh, the health insurance packages, the entire benefit package as a whole. We are continually making cuts. And I, I'm repeating myself. I've said all of this during the committee of the whole meeting. But I just need to drive home the point that we are working on all of that. And that's going to possibly help us sustain our budget as a whole. But it's not going to address the streets issue, because the, the streets issue is so bad to the point where it brought us to the conversation that we have right now. We need to stop kicking the can. And if it's in terms of a $20 a year fee, so be it. That's what we have to do. And I lost my train of thought, so I'm going to sit down now. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for those comments. Alderman Donahue. 
I'm hanging on to my train as long as I can. Um, I'm going to vote in favor of the wheel tax, and again, thank Alderman Thiel for bringing it forward. Um, the, the most important thing that we need to realize in the discussion from my perspective is Dave Beeble's very first slide. So if you look at the cost to repair when it's done in a timely and sensible fashion is about $2. When repairs are delayed comparatively, then we're looking at $6. So if we think we're saving taxpayers any money now, if we think we're making that young woman's life any easier now, that's just simply not true. So what we need to do is we need to have the courage today to reinstate a wheel tax, which is not going to solve all of our problems. It simply isn't. But it's going to go a long way towards that. Now, when my children, when we talked about owning a car, I said, excuse me, this is a really expensive thing that you're looking at. You need to buy the car. You need to send, set money aside for maintenance. You need to pay insurance. And then you have to pay the registration fee. Now, if they were living in Minnesota, that registration fee for you know, an old beater car would be about $138 a year. In Wisconsin, it's about $75. We have done a very, I know it's hard, but if you look at $953 a year, that's about, my math tells me it's about $90. I'm sorry, $80 a month for the services that Mr. Young was talking about that garbage service and the snow plowing and the street sweeping. I have taken advantage with my family of the, the, the uh, ambulance service. Um, my children, when they were, we lived at the library. So we have a really wonderful city here, and we pay, if your house is worth about 100000 about $80 a month. If it's, if it's worth more, of course, you pay a little bit more. I figured that the, the $20... Uh, in, in wheel tax comes out to about $1.75 a month or so. And so what I'm saying is that we're got, we've got to pay one way or the other. If we pay now in this really, I think, reasonable fee, and, and not to diminish the financial hardship that people in our community are having, when $35,000 a year barely gets you there, we know where income inequities and inequalities are coming from. That's not a middle-class lifestyle anymore. I am not in any way, shape, or form denying the information that that young lady conveyed to us or that Corey, the, the young gentleman who called me, I bet he called all of you but didn't leave me a phone number so I couldn't get back to him. I'm not discounting that. But as I said to my children, you want a car? You're going to have to pay. And you're going to have to figure it out. And that's just the responsible thing to do. As a city, we have to pay. We have to figure it out. We have to make this work. If we rely on the state, it's like relying on fantasy land. We've watched the incredible chaos and confusion at the state level in terms of trying to address transportation. Yes, a lot of that money, a hugely disproportionate amount of the transportation money for the state does go to interstate highways. The state has repeatedly shortchanged us on the money that we are supposed to get back in taxes for local roads. So we can't look at the state. We need to look now to this partial solution. Remember, the wheel tax is only a partial solution to this very expensive problem. It is our job tonight to pass this, to begin to address this issue, and maybe then there'll be additional revenue coming to the city because you'll actually be able to speed on 6th Street between Niagara and Superior. Because <laughs> right now, you can't drive more than 30 miles an hour without taking out the underbody of your car. So I, I just think it's a good thing that, that we should do. Thank you very much for those comments. Alderman Heidemann. Well, thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm not supporting the wheel, fee, uh, wheel tax. Um, uh, when I first came into the office, there was a wheel tax, there was a wa stormwater fee, and. Uh, I, I took the position that I, I thought that we were already taxed enough that we didn't have to have any additional fees and voted to eliminate, eliminate those so that I'm, you know, I'm being consistent. Uh, the calls that I received were not to have the, the wheel tax. Um, and again, I think it's uh, unfortunate that we're missing four members of our council that might also be able to vote on this. Uh, it, it might sway the vote one way or another. It actually might be a little bit closer, but I just wanted to make sure that my constituents and the citizens of Schwagen, that I'm not in favor of any wheel tax. 
Thank you for your comments. Um, Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I've gotten back on track here. I remembered where I was going. <laughs> There's a, a tagline out there uh, about uh, Sheboygan being the place to, to live, work, and play. I, I think that's out there somewhere. Tourism. Chad, is he here? No. Anyways, it, it's our goal as a council to create policies and direct the city in a fashion that's going to make Sheboygan a great place to live, work, and play. We're not going to have a lot of business here, businesses here for people to work at if we don't keep up the roads. I mean, the road construct, roads are vitally important to, to manufacturing, to business. We need to be able to get goods from point A to point B. We need to get people from point A to point B. This is just one piece of the puzzle. In regards to uh, being anti-tax, I'm anti-tax for the most part, but I also live in reality. It's one thing having principle, I have principle, I have conservative prim principles, however, there's reality. And this is where we are, this is reality. We all know the numbers. I'm gonna reiterate, in the four and a half years that I've been here, I haven't heard one single good proposal to reduce the budget even further to free up more money. So my, my stance is if you're gonna vote no, I want, I want an alternative. And to this date, I have not heard a viable alternative to come up with the $46 million in today's dollars just to fix the roads in their current condition. Never mind the fact that they're going to continue to degrade, costs are going to continue to go up in the future. If you vote no on this and do not propose something to help fix the problem, you really are just part of the problem, in my opinion. Thank you. Thanks for your comments. Uh, Alderman Bitters. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, to Alderperson Donahue's comments, you can do anything once, including speeding on that street, once. Um, as far as the, the wheel tax and its effect on everyone, the, one of the things that isn't, it, it doesn't come through clear enough, I suppose, is we talk about uh, five to six million dollars a year for roads per year for the next ten years. Uh, the wheel tax projected to be eight hundred thousand dollars. It's just a down payment. It, even at it, at its best, uh, you know, it, it's it's something for the. The Public Works Department to count on, and which is Alderman Thiel's original uh, premise when when he proposed it. it remember, it, this also assumes that nothing else in our budget changes, nothing else gets worse, and the the hole that we we see in the slides, uh, that's probably a good case scenario. Uh, things could get very bad in a hurry, and uh, that uh, that downward spiral that our streets might be seeing now could get even worse very soon. You know, in the in the two to three to five year category. So I, I'm with Alderman Car Carlson. I I don't like taxes. Uh, this is closer to a user fee. I'm not crazy about it either, but we're stuck. <laughs> uh, we're stuck in this revenue hole that we have to claw our way out of. And with that, uh, thank you. Thank you, Alderman Bitters. Alderman Carlson. I'm off my soapbox now. I just have points of clarification for the city attorney. Um, actually, the first one, uh, I, I, People are telling me to stop calling it a wheel tax in the ordinance that actually calls it a fee. So let's just call it a fee. Uh, the first point of clarification I, I want to um, ask, does this include motorcycles and mopeds? How does that fall into this? It includes all, here, I'll look at the exact, in, includes all automobiles or motor trucks registered at a gross weight of not more than 8,000 pounds. So that includes motorcycles, mopeds, I mean, just whatever term you want to call it, as long as it's under 8,000? I don't think, a, it, I do not believe it, oh, it does counts not. motorcycles, no. Automobile or motor trucks? Under 8,000 pounds. Right. Yes. All right. Um, 
So I'll get back to that. The second point, um, why is it limited to 8,000 pounds? Is that some type state of state or statute. federal? Okay, I just wanted to clarify that for people who are asking. There is a state statute that does not allow us to impose a fee. Correct. Feed. Okay. Thank you very much. Alderman Duran. Uh, just very quickly, I went back to look at the numbers again. I know we all just saw that a minute ago, but if we do let the roads get to that point, it's kind of like your teeth if you let them get to that point, $225 per foot on average for concrete reconstruction. And that's, you know, that's three, almost working on four times the amount that it would cost to take care of it in the proper manner as, as presented. I think we need to do this because if we do look at five, six, seven, eight years down the road, we could be looking at three times the amount of deficit. So um, it's, not, it's not fun. Nobody likes this, but we need to do it. Thank you for your comments. Any other discussion? Alderman Carlson. I guess my follow-up, is there a reason why motorcycles weren't explicitly um, put into the ordinance? State statute again. Oh, that is. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I missed that. Sorry. Thank you. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I, too, am going to support this uh, wheel fee. Um, I've been on the Public Works Committee for four years now. Um, ever since I've been on it, it's been a concern of mine. Ever since I've been on the, the council, um, it's the number one concern that I receive from citizens is uh, the conditions of our roads. Um, it's the number one concern um, from people that visit, too, that I end up speaking with is that the conditions of the roads, you know, aren't very good. You've got a beautiful community, you know, if you could just do something with the roads. Um, the last couple of years, we've been fortunate as a city to have a uh, tremendous, tremendous amount of economic development, and we all know that uh, the future looks bright in that area as well. Uh, we need to take care of our infrastructure. It is the skeleton or the backbone of the city, and kicking it, the can down the road, like Alderman Bourne mentioned before, uh, doesn't serve us well. Um, it, it, there's been other aldermen that have spoken that said that, uh, you know, um, delaying this, it's only going to get more expensive. Um, David Beeble has a, the first slide that uh, Alderman Donahue mentioned. It's very impactful. Um, as you let things decay and, and delay things, the costs get greater and greater. Um, we're, we're in this problem because we have been kicking it down the road, quite frankly, and our predecessors did the same thing. So um, it needs to be addressed. It needs to be looked at. Um, I'd, I'd like to commend Rachel for coming up and speaking. Um, she sounds like an outstanding mother and parent, and, and there are some issues with that. But one of the reasons I'm supporting this as a um, partial solution to the the street problem is that it, it is a fee, and those that use the roads in the streets in the city are, are able to you know, help pay for that, and I, and I think that's very important. I've had several phone calls and emails from people that have been opposed to this, and uh, as well as in favor. And those that have been opposed to this, I've always asked them, what is your idea, what is your suggestion for dealing with a $47 million problem that we have over 10 years? And no one's able to come up with an answer for me. I've had one person said, you need to do better code enforcement and have, you know, do that. Well, in increasing our code enforcement, we're already doing that. We're doing an outstanding job of that, but it's got nowhere near the income that we're going to need to address that. Um, and I had another gentleman say, why aren't trucks being um, assessed any type of, of, of fee? And again, state statute, um, uh, Attorney Adams mentions that, that there's a reason for that, that we can't do that. And it's impractical to put a gate on the city and, and charge any truck that comes in for any kind of delivery into festival or any of the other um, you know, places of business that we have too. So that's impractical as well. So this, this isn't easy, it isn't fun, um, but, it, but it's what we signed up for. And I think we need to take care of our infrastructure and you know, get beyond this and, you know, make our city, you know, a great place for everybody to enjoy, citizens and visitors alike. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Anyone else? Seeing none, I'd ask the clerk to call the roll. I will read the motion that you're voting on. Would that be okay? Please go ahead. Okay, we're going to accept and adopt the RC, pass the substitute ordinance as amended, and the amendments are to sunset the wheel tax in 10 years and... To add the B, quote, and all monies remitted will be used for labor and material only, not equipment purchases. 
Everybody get that? Yes. OK. Ten eyes, two noes. Motion passes. Next is item 6.2, which is an RC by finance, to whom was referred resolution number 81 of 1415 by Alderman Hammond, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2015 budget to establish an appropriation for cable TV equipment and IT equipment, and recommends that the resolution be passed. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. I move to accept, adopt, and pass resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? <clears throat> 12 ayes. Motion passes. Item 6.3 is an RC by finance to who is referred resolution number 83 of 1516 by Alderman Hammond authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2015 budget to establish an appropriation for parking and revenue control system for lot 14 equipment and recommends that the resolution be passed. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. I move to accept, adopt, and pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Uh, under discussion, Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, could uh, maybe Alderman Bellinger uh, or maybe Alderman Carlson from the Transit Commission just give me an idea of what this equipment exactly does? It's, I know it's a control system, but I imagine it must be the latest and greatest technology, but I really don't understand it. Alderman Carlson, would you like to respond to that? Yes. Um, I, I actually wasn't at this meeting. I was out of town. Um, however, yeah, it's an um, entry control system for a parking lot. I think uh, to expand upon that, it'll allow people to uh, come in and get a monthly rental there. You can also come in and, and just stay for a few hours. It's sophisticated enough that it'll uh, allow different types of use so you get better utilization of all the spaces that are available. And how do you pay? Uh, you get, you get a, uh, a bill or how does this work? Chad, do you know if... Uh, the, the, Call Chad Pelichek up, the Director of City Development. That's partially the cost of it. It allows you to pay either by cash or credit card. So it'll have a um, mechanism in order for you to insert the cash while you're there, or you can swipe a card. And it'll, it'll be at the north side off of Niagara Avenue. Uh, where the attendance used to be, mm -hmm. um, and it'll be a multi-gate system with you know an incoming gate and an outgoing gate, um, and then the electronics, and it also has a remote uh, electronic component that allows transit to see what's going on without having to go up there and look at it should there be some failures or some issues with it. Thank you. Any other discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage. All eyes. Motion passes. Item 6.4 is an RC by the Committee of the Whole to whom was referred GO number 4 of 1516 by Alderman Berg, creating section 2 138 of the Municipal Code entitled Remote Attendance at Meetings. So, as to permit uh, and regulate participation in meetings by telephone, video conference, or other means, and recommends that the ordinance be passed. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. I move to accept, adopt, and pass the ordinance. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Items on the floor for discussion. Seeing no discussion, will the clerk please call the roll for passage. Eleven eyes, one no. 
Motion passes. Item 6.5 is an RC by Committee of the Whole to whom was referred GO number 12 of 1516 by Alderman Bellinger amending various sections of Chapter 2 of the City of Municipal Code to provide for direct referral of communications, resolutions, and ordinances to committees and eliminate the requirement of a second reading except where otherwise required by law and recommends that the ordinance be passed. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. I move to accept, adopt, and pass the ordinance. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Uh, any discussion on the motion? Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. I had a question on this at, at the Committee of the Whole meeting, and I believe Alderman Bellinger was going to check with the city clerk, but seeing Sue's here, I suppose I can ask her the question. And that is, Sue, on the direct referrals, uh, have you thought or have a plan on how you're going to make us the council and the public aware of the of the uh, direct referrals would it be similar to what you do now with minutes and uh, agendas or other matters authorized by law I just was wondering your thoughts on that yeah um, I've looked at it in the easiest way and the most complete way would be to any document that comes in in that week of council that would be a direct referral what I would do is do typically what I do now is scan the entire document attach it to an email, send it to all the distribution lists, media, all the persons, everybody that gets the agendas and minutes now, they would have, you'd have one, two, three documents and you would, be, it, the subject matter would say direct referral so you could recognize that that's what's coming. Okay. So I think that's the easiest way. Thank you. You bet. Okay, is there any other discussion? See none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Twelve eyes. Motion passes. Item 6.6 .6 is an RC by finance to whom is referred a communication from Zimbel's Properties LLC requesting the interest and penalties for a 2014 delinquent personal property taxes be waived. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. I move to accept, to adopt, and to deny the request. Is there a second? Second. Thank you very much. The motion's on the floor. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, please call the roll. Eleven eyes and one abstention. Motion passes. Item seven point one will lie over. Item 7.2 through 7.4 will be referred to various committees. Alderman Bellinger. Motion to adjourn. Okay. Sorry, we have other matters. Other matters. Okay. <laughs> Second. Second. Come Second. on. <laughs> other matters. 8.1 is an RO from the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31st, 2015 and June 30th, 2017. 8.2 uh, is an RO from the city clerk submitting. That'll be referred to law and licensing. Submitting a petition from residents of Sheboygan asking the mayor and their representatives on the city council to reject the proposal to levy a $20 wheel tax on the citizens of Sheboygan. That'll be referred to the committee of the whole. Mr. Mayor. Alderman Carlson. Could we actually refer that to a standing committee? I don't plan on calling a committee of the whole meeting anytime soon. Okay, that'll be referred to the finance co committee. Thank you. Very good. Alderman Bellinger. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? We stand adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you.